Mr. Speaker, I come to the House. Uh, I call Andrew Williams. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I take a call on behalf of New Zealand First and the Customs and Excise Budget Measures Motor Spirits Amendment Bill. And in so doing, I send greetings to people around New Zealand. In particular, in particular, I send greetings. I send greetings to the people of Dipton, where Bill English's holiday home is located. I send greetings to you in the knowledge that on the 1st of July in Dipton you will be paying another three cents a litre to pay for the roads of national significance, most of which are north of Taupo. I send greetings to the people of Bluff, to the people of Hokitika, to the people of Nelson. I send greetings to the people of Waipakarau, my old hometown, and to the people of Gisborne who don't have a rail uh, um, connection anymore. I send people to, greetings to the people of the East Coast who no longer have who no longer have a rail connection. And I also particularly send greetings to the people of Pippawai up in Northland who have experienced dust problems on their local roads. The people of Pippawai who have suffered incredible dust problems up there because this government, this government sees more importance in their select few roads of national significance they see more importance in their select few roads of national importance than the people of Pippawai who have to put up with dust day in, day out, year on, year out, because this government has cut the subsidies. This government has cut the subsidies to rural regional New Zealand. And rural regional New Zealand is the area that's suffering from this government. And I'm the uh, spokesman for local government for New Zealand First. We are hearing constantly from local authorities and from people around New Zealand how their local roads, their local rural roads, their local regional roads are going backwards because this government is putting all the focus on their select few roads of national significance. And Mr Speaker, I'd like to draw everyone's attention to the statement made by Jerry Brownlee in his press statement on the 18th of December 2012 when this was first announced, that these three cents per litre excise taxes would be uh, starting as of the 1st of July this year, as of another three cents the 1st of July in 2014, and another three cents 1st of July 2015, Jerry Brownlee, Minister of Transport, said the series of July increases will also ready the Land Transport Fund for investment in Upper North Island transport projects beyond the Roads of National Significance programme. So Mr Brownlee stated in December that these increases starting this coming month, next month are to basically provide for the investment in the Upper North Island transport projects beyond the Roads of National Significance. So again, I say to the people of Dipton, to the people of Bluff, to the people of Hokitika, to the people of Nelson, to the people of Waipakarau and the people up in Pippawai. I hope you are happy that in a month's time, when your fuel goes up by three cents a litre, that you will be paying for the benefit of a select area of New Zealand, the Upper North Island, to benefit, while the rest of New Zealand basically suffers. And that's not, and that's not good enough. That's not good enough. We all live in one country. We are all New Zealanders. We all deserve to have a fair, uh, uh, a fair share market. of what is available and we all deserve to have uh, and we all deserve to be treated fairly. What this government is doing is, is selecting specific areas where they see the most votes, where they see the most opportunities and where they see the best return for them. And Mr Speaker, why is, why is it that we're having to have these three cent increases this year, next year and the year after? Well, partly it's because a couple of years ago, this same government slashed nearly $2 billion off income taxes of the top 10 per cent earners in this country. The top 10 per cent earners in this country received significant income tax cuts. Mr up. John Key himself got $1,000 a week extra back in tax as a result of the tax cuts. Order. The big tall Scotsman who was running uh, Telecom, Paul Reynolds, who was on many millions of dollars per year, received $5,000 a week of tax cuts 
$5,000 a week of tax cuts from those tax uh, uh, cuts that National put through a couple of years ago. So all the high rollers, all the wealthy people, have all seen some very significant improvements in their own personal wealth, including all the ministers, on a quarter of a million dollars a year, significant reduction in their, in their uh, tax. Meanwhile, meanwhile, everyday, good, honest, hard-working New Zealanders are going to be asked to spend, as of July the 1st this year, another three cents a litre to fill up their tanks, as of next year, another three cents, and the year after, another three cents. So basically, while, while the likes of the Honourable John Banks cruises around in his Bentley in Auckland, while uh, the ministers cruise around in their big crown BMWs, seven series BMWs, uh, taking their tax, taking their tax cuts, taking their tax cuts, Mr. Key taking his thousand dollars a week, good New Zealanders, good New Zealanders will be paying for the pleasure of that. Mr Speaker, it is very interesting that the current excise tax on fuel, according to the AA, is 61.129 cents per litre of fuel. That is, that is, that's the amount of tax. 61.129 cents of every, of every litre of fuel. So the government's already getting a pretty jolly good share. So when you're paying say $2.10 a litre, you take off 61 cents. You already know that 61 cents of that is going to the government. So they're getting a fair amount of money. And now they're going to add another nine cents a litre. By the end of th another three years, another nine cents a litre. It is incredible. And Mr Speaker, isn't it interesting, isn't it interesting that they're having to do this to help balance their budget, to help try and sort of find some sort of margin of error surplus in 2014-15, which is only in the order of something around a hundred something around a hundred million dollar surplus in 2014. Imagine if they didn't have this, and they're saying they're going to get an extra ninety million dollars a year from these three cents increases to start with. Imagine if they didn't have this, then basically they'd be in the red. They'd be in the red. And so basically, Mr Speaker, you know, you have to be a little bit sceptical and say, well, did they do their budgets? Did they do all their figuring? Did they do all their sums? Did they work out all the various things? And then go, oh my goodness, we're going to be in the red if we don't find some more money. Where do we find some more money from the good, average, everyday, hard-working New Zealanders? Ah, let's get it from their pockets. Let's put it through the, through the petrol bowser. Let's take another nine cents a litre by 2016 uh, 2015 16, and let's try and balance the books with some more money out of, out of petrol. Mr. Speaker, this is a very disappoint, disappointing thing for the average New Zealander. Average New Zealanders are being stung at the moment with higher electricity prices, and they'll see even higher electricity prices uh, as a result of the sale of mighty river power. And when Meridian's put on the block and that's sold off, average New Zealanders are going to be paying more for the everyday vital necessities of life. Aucklanders are now saying they're paying far more in Auckland for their water as a result of this government creating the super city. New Zealanders are paying far more for their electricity. They're going to be paying far more for their petrol. Basically, this is a miserable budget that once again the good, average, everyday New Zealander suffers from. But meanwhile, the fat cats and we saw the Right Honourable Winston Peters here the other day with, with, the, with the mouse. And, and the mouse might come out again this afternoon. If this keeps going, the mouse might come out again. But the Right Honourable Winston Peters said the poor average New Zealander is on the treadmill trying to make it better. But every time he goes forward, the treadmill keeps coming back at him and he can't ever make any progress. Because under this government, the good average New Zealander continues to have his everyday wage taken away from him, and this latest fuel tax is just the latest poor, poor effort by this government to try and balance the books. New Zealand First will not be supporting this. I call Chris Ockenvold. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, goodness me, one had thought, one had thought that Andrew Williams could probably...